Buffalo. So, <clears throat> not, not sad about anything, not in mourning, but we're making black hummus today because the next time I'm sad in a period of uh, bereavement, I feel like, you know, I would make the black hummus and that would represent that sadness. You know what I mean? A bit louder? Hello? Jerry? Hello? Why are we sad? We're not sad. That's the thing, we're not sad. Nobody's sad. But maybe you should know how to make your favorite food sad just in case the next time you're sad. We're preparing to be sad. You know, I was thinking about watching The Fountain later. I love that movie. That movie makes me very sad. So it doesn't have to be a bad kind of sad. Sometimes it's just a kind of sadness to remind you that you still feel anything at all. Yeah, it's grief. Today we're making grief hummus. <laughs> so when I was exploring variations of hummus, roasted red pepper, pine nut, roasted garlic, this, this and that, most of them just do not sound good to me. But I did come across the idea of making a, a black or gray hummus, which is all you do is I'm going to have to make my own tahini, but I'm going to be using black sesame seeds instead of normal sesame seeds to make it. So there's a good chance this is going to come out more like beige or grayish than black. Also, black sesame is a little... Uh, Black, black sesame seeds are a little nuttier, maybe? Yeah, feels like Robin Crid would make this hummus. Rob definitely had his uh, black uh, grilled cheese, black everything phase. Then I think Shane Dawson jumped on board that train. Those are our strange bedfellows, you know? Could have used charcoal? Yes or carbon, activated, no, activated charcoal, not carbon. A little twangy, so we should just do it. I guess, uh, first thing, I wanna get ahead of my standard hummus recipe at this point. I, I soak my garlic in the lemon and it takes the bite off the raw garlic. So we're gonna do that first. And then we'll just get right into making the black uh, tahini. Why complicate things? Food coloring is the solution. Well, when Rob made his rainbow grilled cheese, he went to a farm where they had cows and they fed the cows a diet of uh, food coloring and it turned the cows different colors. So the cheese the cows made was the color they had dyed the cow. And that's the real way to get a multicolored cheese sandwich. This is not the juiciest lemon. I might need an extra lemon. We going sheer or one coat black? This is definitely gonna be a not one coat black. Similar for chocolate milk? Yeah, most people don't know this. Chocolate milk comes from feeding cows raw cocoa powder. I know that sounds inhumane, but the cows love it. Microwave the lemon? Fuck you. All right, that got me just under a third of a cup. So a little bit less than I would like, but uh, I'm gonna live with it. 
if I were to cut a whole other lemon, that would be going a little, a little nuts, you know? You are a cow illusion? Is that a question or a statement? You have a question mark. You are a cow, question mark. Could you repeat your question in the form of a statement? Lemon has to be grown in the sun. On the sun? I made nachos by almost following your recipe from the other day. Mac, how, how were they? Those were, though they did not keep. They did not taste good the next day. Nachos have to be had fresh, now I know. Next time I make nachos, I'll keep in mind that I'm probably making enough nachos for like four people. There was four people's worth of nachos there. I probably ate two people's worth of nachos that night. Uh, and the leftovers were not good. Then you should try vacation to mediocre theme parks. First stop, Hershey Park. Uh, I don't know anything about Hershey Park. It sounds like you're insulting it. That would be pretty, you know, that's a pretty good idea. You, you got other people doing like, I'm staying at the nicest hotels in the world. I'm flying first class. I'm staying in ice hotels, underwater hotels. I could just be like, I'm going to local amusement parks in middle America that nobody cares about. Sounds like it would be a lot of fun. I forgot a knife. Sounds like a good idea for someone else to do. Put it that way. I would I would rather just join Sophia and Tyler in their like going actually interesting places, you know? I'll send my brother to Hershey Park. their cameraman. <laughs> Tyler's their cameraman. Haven't you figured out the whole thing with Sophia and Tyler videos is like you're getting the supportive boyfriend experience. Like he's he's behind the camera being the supportive boyfriend. That's what's so uh, heartwarming about their content. recipe uh, but tahini is just you you blend you blend sesame seeds until it's like a crumbly not paste crumbly meal uh, and then you just add a th two three four tablespoons of oil until it starts resembling tahini does that sound right I'm just not sure how many seeds to put in the first place. Oh, toast. I should toast the sesame seeds. Good point. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. Should I quickly look up? I think I saw one that's like three cup sesame seeds to three or four tablespoons of oil. Does that sound right? Yeah, I have one here from... Aubrey's Kitchen. Hello, Aubrey. One cup sesame seeds to three tablespoons sunflower or neutral oil. That sounds way more reasonable. One cup to three tablespoons. We dry, dry toast the sesame seeds. Do you have anything to soak the sesame seeds? I don't think you need to do that. It smells weird. 
For some reason, I expected this to smell like poppy seeds, but that's that's not that's not right. So here, I'll do it on this element so you can see. Was like most of this bag. This stuff wasn't cheap either. I guess tahini's not cheap though. Black sesame ice cream tastes good. I got extra with what's left of this and I got a little bit more maybe. Also pre-skinned my chickpeas, but I missed some apparently. How are you guys doing, Mac? I want to hear more about your nachos. How were the nachos? I missed your I missed your reply. Ben, why did you take off the vod? What vod, Shandri? What did you do with the garlic? I'm soaking the garlic in the lemon juice. I'm finishing a final for University for Russian History. Uh, you should look at the cover art for the original release of Tetris for the NES uh, if you're looking for any formatting or color ideas. I'm currently in the hospital with low oxygen party. Taylor and Heather, is it because you went to the Taylor Swift concert last night and you screamed too much? He took off a VOD. I wasn't able to watch any last week. Do you, uh, no, I didn't take anything down. You're imagining things. You had to be there. Are we going to get a Taylor Swift vlog? Uh, no. No. I'll give you a Taylor Swift uh, concert review. How about that? There's no content, just Taylor. Are you gonna see Taylor Swift on Mother's Day because she is mommy? Uh, is, is Mother's Day this weekend? No. Ben believes in no phones at concerts. It's true, I couldn't film a vlog for you. I was thinking about making nachos and uh, bringing them to Taylor Swift though. Don't wanna burn these by accident. She'd appreciate that. She Taylor Swift looks like she would enjoy some nachos. I'm gonna get nothing new. I, I'm so happy about that. When people were talking about like, oh, what surprise song do you think she's gonna sing here and there and whatever? I was like, I don't really care about any of that. But on her tour dates with Phoebe Bridgers, I just really want, uh, I just really want nothing new. All, all I was asking for is nothing new. And it looks like it's kind of added to the set list and not just a bonus track. Did you see that Phoebe brought out Boy Genius? I, I saw someone tweet about that, but I didn't see anything. That's pretty cool. I won't lie, I'm just as excited to see Phoebe Bridgers as I am to see Taylor Swift. Maybe even a little bit more? Don't tell anyone though. Yeah, I don't want to overdo this, so I'm probably going to only lightly toast these sesame seeds. You can ruin these fast. I could hear Katy Perry performing at the castle yesterday. 
The King's Coronation Party? Would you have waited in the rain like the people in Nashville did? Probably not. <laughs> you heard Katy Perry. I was... You know what? I kind of want to go... I... I... Let's say we do a Europe trip one day. Tomorrow, next year, five years from now. Because I feel like it's not like we're gonna be traveling to Europe like all the time. I feel like it's gonna have to be one of those trips where it's like, let's knock two, three, four places off our list. And I feel like it would be so easy to fly either through London Heathrow or Paris that maybe we just do like one on the way in, the other on the way out. Give, Christine can have some tea. We can uh, talk about the queen. We could look at the guys with funny hats. We could go to Stonehenge. And then go somewhere more interesting. Yeah, we could save Rimmo. We could just we could just drive around London on the wrong side of the road going Rimmo London. <laughs> Get the London look. <laughs> I went to London recently. It was fun. What do you what do what do people do in London? They try to marry into the royal family. Everything. They drink tea, see the National Gallery. They get rained on, it rains a lot. Tom Cruise was there too. It was a strange shift. What do you mean he, he was in the same city as you? It's not like Tom Cruise walked into your restaurant and go, let me tell you about Scientology. Let me blow your mind. London Eye, they go, it's a Ferris wheel, right? Is the Big Ben something people go see? Or you just sort of look at it and you go, that's a clock. That's a big clock. Premier League? Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I'm not doing the soccer tour of Europe, you know? I went to a I went to a f football match in Istanbul. It was uh, Galatasaray versus fuck. What was the other one? It was a big rivalry between these two Turkish football teams. They're lighting fucking flares and fireworks in the stands. And, you know, it was uh, it was an experience. Maybe the most disgusting thing I've ever eaten in my entire life was at that, that soccer game in Turkey, by the way. We had just gotten off the plane, just landed, immediately had it in our plans because our flight was delayed, yada, yada, yada. We went straight to this football stadium. <laughs> and I hadn't eaten anything in like so long. And so I just go up to this guy with a cart and it's like it's like a little food food cart, and it's just these 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 hot dogs, but they're purple for some reason, just like in this like tepid water, and he <laughs> fries them out and puts it in a bun, and I'm like I have no idea what I'm eating right now, but I don't care. I'm so hungry. Ben, are you a Punisher or Strange in the Alps fan? of Phoebe's. I don't know her discography well enough to really give you a great answer to that. Like, pun like I know Punisher's. I'm more familiar with Punisher than the rest of her catalog. My favorite song of hers isn't even her song, by the way. Or she does a cover of a Tom Waits song. Not on, it wasn't Punisher, it was her more recent one, I think. She does a cover of a Tom Waits song, fuck, what's it called? It's about a soldier off at war writing a letter back home. It's so good. Can't remember the name. Day After Tomorrow. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. Amazing. All right, we're blending our chickpeas. How about that? Someone said London's good if you have money. Why, what do rich people do in London? There's no like private villa. You know, what, what do they do? 
I already turned off this. I already turned this off, so I think it's good. And we have unrefined sunflower oil. Yeah. They live in pretty houses. London's just expensive, I see. Money buys nice views and calm streets. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not moving there. I think I'd be more like I want to do London, Paris. I've heard really good things about Spain, and I've always sort of thought of as uh, Greece uh, as somewhere I want to go. Unref oh, does unrefined mean it's gonna taste like sunflowers? Should I just use an olive oil since I'm gonna be putting it into... Why don't I just use olive oil? I know it has more of a taste. I'm just gonna use olive oil, right? Yeah, I'm just gonna do olive oil. But I just, I just do the sesame seeds first. Should I just dump it in? All right, Jerry, I'm turning you down. Still see full seeds. I probably need it to be even more. Probably another minute or two. I'm adding three tablespoons of olive oil.
This doesn't look anything like tahini. <laughs> like it's still very mealy. You know what I mean? Like it's not a liquid. Does it smell like tahini? Yeah, it smells like sesame. But it's like, it's like sand. It's not like... It's not like a paste or a liquid. Just keep on blending or does it need more oil? Strain it? No, I, w I, want, I want it to be more liquidy. I think it probably just needs more oil. Limited power. Almost. All right, I think we're good. You wanna see? That is very black. I did add a lot of oil, so I'll probably take it easy on the oil in the actual hummus. Yeah, I can smell the olive oil in here as much as the nuttiness. All right, I guess I gotta get it out of here. Out of here.
That's a pretty good amount. I think I'll use all of it. Obviously, there's still some in here. But yeah, I'm just gonna follow my normal hummus recipe at this point. Do you wanna see how, it's very black. You see how black this is? It almost looks like a shimmer. You know, there's a bit of a glisten from what remains of the sesame seeds. <laughs> like, a, like a mica, like a fine mica powder. Is it grainy still? It's like a tiny bit, but like very fine. Like I got some on my hand just now. Is that gonna focus? No, it's way too bright. I guess you can't even see that. How does it taste? I don't know. First, I just get a lot of the olive oil, to be honest. But then after that, it's 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 nuttier. It's a uh, a little more complex than a normal tahini. There is a little bit of grit to it still, which is probably just my tahini making technique. I did put a lot of oil. This is true. Anyway, let's do let's do our hummus. Uh, chickpeas, our lemon and garlic. Oh, forgot to put this back in. Fuck. I was like, why is there a big hole there? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I forgot the blade. Uh, what do I do? I guess I have to pour it out. Can I just sneak it in there? That's not gonna work, is it? Yeah, it literally leaked through. Round two.
realized it's not even on the base properly. There we go. Just directing traffic, you know. All right. All right. That, that, that looks as advertised. We weren't expecting a one coat black hummus. We were expecting more of a gray hummus. And this is a gray hummus. Consistency seems about right. I didn't add any olive oil. Uh, we're just gonna, this like, I need like 15 more seconds of blending. See? <laughs> it doesn't look as disgusting in real life. Like it's it's reading a bit green on the camera, but it's not. It's a pretty true gray. Yeah, can you tell more on the side? Yeah, that's that is the color. Smells like hummus. It's a little chunkier than my normal. Looks mysterious. I'm gonna try to get it without getting the like, <clears throat> there's definitely some like sesame seed remnants there. Looks like I'm about to pour foundation. Yes, Juvon, this was all so we can add a gray shade to the true authentic hummus collection. Man, that is bizarre. It looks just really unnatural. I guess you don't really think about this going through life, how certain foods you just really associate with certain colors. Or is there something about any food being black that just seems wrong? Like it looks like it must be bad? Like something bad happened to it or it's spoiled? Because like I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it must taste bad but I have no real reason to think that.
It's like grout. I'm about to go uh, <laughs> retile my shower. That is that is bizarre. It's not, yeah, that makes a difference. <clears throat> Probably not a good one either. Might be my fault for not, for leaving there being still some grit to the sesame. But even just the taste the black sesame adds. A little nutty bitterness almost. It's a slightly more aggressive flavor. Yeah, it's a little earthy and bitter, Brenna. That's that's a good way of putting it. Yeah, I, I, I'll definitely stick to normal sesame from now on, but I, I would be interested in trying making tahini again with just regular sesame seeds. Yeah, it also has just a little bit of a gritty texture. That's probably my fault. But even the taste of the black sesame is adding a dimension to it that I don't think I would, I, I would want to repeat. I might have to put it in the fridge for a minute though to give it a fair, uh, to give it a fair rating. It just looks so bizarre. Use a neutral oil for the tahini. Olive oil. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I don't think olive oil was the best choice. Maybe I should have just stuck with the sunflower oil. Would I want to eat it when I'm sad? Yeah, I could see that. This is good sad hummus. Maybe I'll keep it in the fridge until the next time I'm sad. Score for the hummus spreadsheet. I haven't looked at that hummus spreadsheet in a minute. My nachos were totally, yeah. Nachos make up for whatever rating this gets. I'm just gonna stick this in the fridge for a minute. Maybe I'll make some, uh, I'm actually hungry. I might make some real food. You can, you can stay. Here's your bonus content. We're making a pinza. A pinza. <laughs> no more nachos, pinza.
Pinsa is a state of mind? Yeah. Um, you take old pizza dough uh, and then you leave it in the hot sun for five days. And then it magically turns into pinsa. It's kind of like magical realism, you know? Is pinsa pizza made on pita bread, monkey? No, monkey. <laughs> pinsa, they call this pinsa focaccia, but pinsa dough usually just means it's made with uh, a blend of a few different uh, flours. So it's not just a bunch of like gluten-y bread flour. It's a little easier on your gut. Your gut. Yes, it's from Farm Boy for anyone from Ottawa or Ontario. We're not making gray pinsa, we're just making pinsa. It's the, the dinner of champions. This one feels maybe not the freshest. So, we got our, we got our store made tomato sauce, yes. Yes, queen. Favuzzi. Sauce tomate por pizza. Little small batch. They put this on the lid as if it makes it fancy, you know? No. You can easily ruin a pizza or a pinza with too much sauce. Do not put too much sauce on your pinza. Ben, my parents are watching The Big Bang Theory. One day you'll look back on that moment and realize your parents had a terrible sense of humor. Maybe you already know this. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil down here too. Don't tell anyone. Just, just a little bit, just a little bit. Are you, okay chat, are you cheese on under or on top of ingredients, people? I used to be strictly under. Like, I would just put the cheese on at this point. But lately, I've been kind of doing a bit of put a little cheese down, put ingredients, and then put a little more on top. So I guess both. But the majority should, should be this base layer, correct? Because you want your other ingredients to get kind of crispy sometimes. Who puts it over? I don't know if it's a Canadian thing, an Ottawa thing. There are a lot of pizza places here who put the ingredients under the cheese. Cheese under, but sprinkle on top. That's what we're gonna do. All right, here's some mozzarella, a little mozzarella. Save just a little bit for sprinkling. Now I have, here's what, we, here's what we're working with. I've got jalapeno, green olive, green pepper, mushroom, and pre-sliced pepperoni. I'm not saying I'm using all of these things. That'd be crazy. We're not crazy, okay? No pineapple, shut up. <laughs> you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. <laughs> I, 
I think I'm gonna put a little jalapeno on one end, and that is my protective barrier from Christine. I think on the rest of it, green pepper mushroom, that's always a good combo. Can't go wrong with just the green pepper and mushroom. I don't think I would add green olives to that mix. And uh, of course the pepperoni on all of it. Make a loaded pinza. Pinza fully loaded. You gotta be very careful in placing your pep. You can never have too much pep on a pinza. All right, let the other ingredients just sort of fall in between your pep. I think that's good. Heavy on the pep. Black olives are better on pizza. Like, you prefer black olives compared to green olives? I don't know about that. Depends on the other ingredients for me. I would generally prefer green olives on pizza. I probably don't need too much of this. Yeah, I only need one mushroom because this this quadrant here, I'm just doing jalapeno. Just the jalapeno. These are a little thick. I want a bigger piece. Yeah, like that. There we go. I think that's good. And then a little, just a little cheese on top. If you want to see this first, it'll give you a better sense of the toppings. We're not adding black hummus. <laughs> It's 
looks good. Ooh, that looks good. Why is it? It's not auto-focusing. One sec. Uh, ISO. Get over here. Come on. Is that better? actually see it a little bit more. All right, we just broil. We're just gonna broil, baby. Woo! Woo! Broil, I've got no pizza oven. Swatches. So pinza is a tiny excuse for pizza? What do you mean tiny? That wasn't enough? Croft, how about them Leafs? <laughs> Florida Panthers are my bandwagon team. I said it before the, the second series started. I was rooting for them against Boston and I'm like, I'm just gonna I'm hopping on this train. Next, next stop, Sunrise, Florida. Go Devils. Uh, selfishly, I would rather. I told I told Tyler if Carolina, if the Hurricanes make the Stanley Cup final, I'm I'm showing up on their door, <laughs> at their door. What about the cheese on top? We put we put a little cheese on top. Need, I need a pinza oven now. Yeah, it can't be a pizza oven. It needs to be a pinza oven. Why is the kitchen so dark? I just turned down the camera. So you could see it was, it was getting too uh, washed out here, you know? We're doing a rotation. Shout out to Bez Belbo. Do it for Bez. You gotta make focaccia next. Christine's fancy aunt was telling me I should make bread. I don't know, uh, I'm intimidated by making bread, to be honest. I find like bread people are really into making bread. They take making bread very seriously. They're like, oh, I need my starter. I use this kind of yeast. Uh, maybe that's just sourdough, I don't know. But, but bread, pe bread people are serious people. And I'm not sure I'm that serious about bread. I could become a bread person. I like bread, I love bread. I agree with Oprah, but that doesn't mean I need to make bread. And 
That, my friends, is how you make a pinza. Come on now. That looks like a pinza. This isn't actually a pizza cutter, it's like a pastry wheel, I think. <laughs> Don't ask. I think it's for making like a little pattern in your, in your pie dough. better. Oh my god, you're using a pastry wheel? Ooh. It's a me, a pinza. It's a good pinza. Jalapeno, good choice. Good, cho good choice, me. Look at that. Need a new oven, silly munchkins. It doesn't it doesn't broil. You don't set the temperature, you just set it to broil. It basically just turns your oven into a toaster. You might have to start a silly munchkins new oven fund though. Don't worry, I'll save some pinza for simply. Broiling is a dangerous game. Just gotta keep an eye on it. High broil or low? It was high, high broil for sure, for a pizza. Should have just made this a pinza stream. That's good stuff. Christine's probably gonna come eat some dinner, but uh, you can't see her or her hands probably. So, so Christine can eat. We're gonna say goodbye. Uh, you can take a look at this pinza one last time. Uh, and the next time I'm streaming, there's probably new Fall Guys, right? <laughs> Let me eat. 
Show me the hands. Give me your hands. You wanna hear something? Sometimes Christy and I hold hands and I'm like, so many people want these hands, but they're mine. I get to hold them. <laughs> All right, get out of here, you weirdos. You're creeping me out. <laughs>